Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. It has been nearly a week since the plane vanished with 239 people on board. Aviation experts are baffled. The former chief of staff of the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration says no one has seen anything like this. We have a plane that took off at Kuala Lumpur and disappeared. That's all we have. We have no facts. We have no, we have no debris. So what's happening is we're having kind of the breaking news du jour. Yesterday, we were all excited about the satellite the Chinese satellite. Because it was consistent with the flight path. It said, oh, you know, and it was, it was lucky. It was a lucky hit that they probably saw something in the ocean that would allow the investigators. Turned out to be a false lead. So now, with the turn to the left, it, maybe it is terrorism, maybe it is suicide, but let's just look at the other theory. If, it, if the pilot in command turned that plane back, okay, and then was overcome in some manner through a slow decompression, uh, through, through some kind of structural problem, but not a failure. Aloha Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines disintegrated in air, lost half of its hull, and landed safely. So the notion of catastrophic or nothing is not the way the investigators are going to look at this. Well, let's get the very latest now from Kuala Lumpur. Jim Clancy joins us now live. And Jim, uh, they've been holding news conferences there in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, what more are they saying today? Well, they are saying that they are aware, certainly, of all the reports that you have heard in the previous hours. Reports that indicate the plane was automatically sending back data to satellites, pinging those satellites, uh, if you will, giving its altitude, giving its heading, giving its airspeed. All important information. There's no doubt about that. But it can be analyzed by the experts. At the same time, Malaysian authorities here say that they are giving their raw data, their raw radar uh, records to the U.S. investigators from the NTSB, from the Federal Aviation Administration, and allowing them to plot the courses to figure out where this aircraft may have gone. Remember, the Malaysians were reluctant, really, to talk about those radar records because they said they couldn't prove that that was actually Flight 370. Well, apparently, the Americans looked at the data and came to the conclusion that it led them into the Indian Ocean because that's where we saw a dramatic increase in the search today. The Indian Navy reports that they anticipate that search area is going to be at least 17,000 square nautical miles, a huge expanse uh, of the Indian Ocean. Already, the USS Kidd is uh, going to be heading in the direction from east to west, following basically whatever course they see, whatever course the, that, that data shows them that the plane itself took. Now, they say that the plane was aloft perhaps as much as five hours, and that was over an open expanse of ocean. It had no place to land, and that raises questions. Just as you heard in the by the previous guests uh, speaking there, that perhaps the pilot tried to turn back and didn't make it in terms of being able to stay conscious and pilot the plane. But the pl plane carries on. Remember, it's got enough fuel not only go to go to Beijing, but to go far, a little bit beyond that, and that takes it deep into the Indian Ocean. There have been a lot of conflicting reports. We've heard a lot of the false leads, probably more of them today. Chinese students at a university saying that they heard some audio that indicated the plane might have hit at a, uh, at a specific location. And yet all evidence right now suggests to us this plane is nowhere near the South China Sea. It's somewhere in the Indian Ocean, perhaps at the bottom. Monita? The danger of, about this, uh, uh, Jim, is that because of all the theories and speculation, there are so many stories that are coming out. Families in Beijing, meanwhile, of the loved ones, of the uh, passengers and crew of the plane, are waiting for any word. And they are even saying, as our Pauline Chu has been reporting, that they actually hope that perhaps this was a hijacking, that because that would mean that they that their loved ones may still very much be alive. Yes, and that's understandable. That's the one thing that gives them a sliver of hope to hang on to Monita. I don't blame them for that. It's not a likely scenario. Uh, it's one of the options, and all options are open. There's no doubt about that. We also heard from Beijing today that the family members are demanding that the Malaysians send a government official, a military official. They have some hard questions that they want to ask. They want to hear some answers. Monita?
Jim, thank you. Jim Clancy there live for us from Kuala Lumpur. Well, the missing plane is a Boeing 777, considered one of the world's safest commercial airliners. Martin Savage has been spending time in a cockpit sim simulator. He joins us now from Mississauga in Ontario, Canada. And he's joined by uh, pilot Mitchell Casada, who uh, trains pilots to fly 777s. Marty? Hey, Manita, what we wanted to do was, and as you point out, it's a simulator, but boy, it sure feels real. This is a 777-200 cockpit, the same as Malaysia Air 370, and we've set it up so we're doing exactly what they were doing at the time they were doing it. In other words, we took off from Kuala Lumpur about 45 minutes ago. We're now coming up on BTOD. This is a reference point here on this computerized map. BTOD is the last known point that the aircraft officially reported in before whatever happened happened. We're cruising at an altitude of 10,668 meters or 35,000 feet and we're doing 287 knots. Exactly what the airplane was doing. It's a night sky, it was a night flight. Let's talk about some of the important equipment here, the transponder. So much has been made about that. That is this rather, what looks like an innocuous looking little device right here. It's crucial, located on the dashboard of the aircraft. And this is essentially Mitchell Casada, who's acting as pilot here. Why don't you tell me, what does the transponder do? Transponder sends the signals to the ground, lets the air traffic controllers know where we are, who we are, where we're going, where we came from, just all the pertinent information for the flight. Yeah. It's crucial, we can't stress that enough, Monita. Can you turn it off? Yes, you can. Let me show you how it's done. You've got the knob right here, three clicks to the left, and now the transponder is off. Essentially, that means that we're no longer transmitting who we are, but on radar, we would still appear, right? Mitch? Yes. <laughs> you'd have a basic return. It would just be a blip, but there would be no information. So you'd have nothing to identify the actual aircraft. And you wouldn't turn this off. I mean, normally there is no way in flight you would turn this off. Absolutely not. Yeah. One thing I should point out about the transponder is that there's another way to use it, Monita, and that's in the case of, say, a hijacking. It is possible to take this and enter in a specific code. I'm not gonna enter the code, but I'll show you how it's done. You enter a code, and now you're automatically transmitting, without going on the radio, that you have been hijacked. And Mitchell, what happens on the ground? They're gonna challenge that. They're gonna um, uh, call you up and ask you to confirm that that's the case. That's a very serious situation, so you're gonna get an immediate call within about two, three seconds, and... Uh, These are alarm bells that exactly. are going off, essentially, that's to right. say, hey, wait a minute, there's a problem. Yeah. As far as we know, that signal was never sent. As far as we know, there wasn't a challenge given to when the transponder shut down. We don't know why. One last thing, could the plane be taken off course? Yes, it can. We're on automatic pilot right now, but if I did take it off... Shut that down. There's an alarm that goes off. So nothing is done without those on board knowing it's happening, Monita. All right, Martin, thank you very much for that. Martin Savage there uh, in that uh, cockpit uh, simulator, I should say, uh, in uh, Canada to give us an idea of uh, what could and what should be happening uh, when things are normal. Still to come here on the show, searchers are scouring the oceans for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane, but the search in the South China Sea has highlighted another problem. We'll tell you what that is when we speak to former UK Foreign Secretary David Miliband next.